What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a bunch of uh, budget turbo kit stuff as you can see in the thumbnail. Uh, pretty much going to be talking about what you got to do to prepare to uh, install one of these budget turbo kits. If you buy it from me and you do it yourself or and uh, you're going to be doing it in your garage or if you got a small shop and you want to put it on. What you got to do to prepare the car to be uh, turboed and going over, you know, things that you got to do to prepare the car to put on a budget turbo kit. All right, so we've got our sample car right here. Um, it's a K20. So if you buy a kit from me and you have a K24, the Rev9 manifolds that I use do not clear the cowl, even if you modify it some. So you would have, I would get a CX racing manifold and they do come with a 38 millimeter wastegate. And I'm going to cut the 38s off and put a 44 on there that has really good uh, wastegate priority so it doesn't creep. And this is how you get past the issue with the 24. Now with the 20s and you have still 24s, they both will have the same head unless you're using like an RSX head. Um, you would have this ungodly water neck right here so what i'm going to do is show you guys what we got to put on here to for the manifolds to clear and uh well for the turbos to clear i should say and so you can get the wastegates to work and everything so we're going to go on by uh we're going to start by taking off the intake and uh undoing some of these coolant lines uh getting rid of some of the stuff that's on the valve cover that's cluttering up and getting rid of uh this little plastic doohickey right here that's really unnecessary and we're gonna prep this car to be turbo all right so you want to go ahead and get your tray something that's gonna clear the well not clear but something that's gonna be able to hold uh the coolant that you're gonna take off of here i've already taken the intake off i got the tray on it there right now we're gonna take this radiator hose off uh we're gonna remove this stuff right here that goes to the throttle body for uh the throttle body heater and uh we're gonna take like these fuel lines off we're gonna take the heater hoses off we are gonna reuse most of this stuff the bracketry that goes on here if you're on flash pro this is some evap bullshit um <laughs> you could take this off and delete it uh normally on all the cars that i do we pretty much delete that and then uh there's a bracket that holds all the stuff to the valve cover. Uh, you could take that off also. Well, you're going to have to take that off. It'll free up a lot of room. And um, I plan on putting some sort of fuel uh, return kit on this car. Uh, and I'll also be coming up with some sort of uh, fuel return kit to uh like a production fuel return kit for us for this chassis also four doors or coupes it'll work on both of them and uh it'll be available to the public maybe around late december um, once i come up with all the logistics of it then i'll be able to uh offer that it'll more than likely come with a fuel rail uh the return line a regulator and um an adapter that will come off of uh behind this bracket right here is the the entry point for the fuel uh from the fuel pump and uh you just gotta take this off and it'll be a clip that'll come off of it the line will more than likely come from here go all the way around go to a regulator that's mounted somewhere out Colton's car it is mounted on the uh where the hell is it mounted? it's mounted off directly off your free rail which i really don't like that because if you got engine mounts that vibrate really hard which this car is going to get engine mounts also um it could cause the fuel line to come loose to either leak or break or sort of fitting and it'll be unideal. So uh, I'm going to come up with a way to mount the regulator. Um, I'm pretty sure I may, um, I don't know, the windshield washer fluid in this car doesn't work. I'm not sure if the pump's not working or if it's out of fluid. So I'm going to test that. And if it isn't working, then I'm just going to, uh, take this off the windshield washer reservoir and mount the battery over there in this corner and uh that'll call that will solve my battery location issue i really don't like mounting these in the trunk because most of the time when you do that it causes a bunch of voltage issues because k-series are really sensitive to voltage so <clears throat> we're going to come up with a resolution for that but for now um we're just going to worry about putting on the 
uh, we're getting the stuff off and then I'll show you what I got to put it on there. All right, so got all the nuts and bolts out of the water neck. Pretty much just slide it off. Take this gasket off right here. And chuck this shit in the trash. And here you have the uh, side of the head where the water neck is. This thing is a valve gasket like no other. It's also got 300,000 miles on it and we're still gonna send it. So uh, to get these studs out right here, sometimes they'll come out by hand. You can use vice grips and grip onto it, turn them out. And if you don't have vice grips, you can do the double nut method and take it out that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on taking these two out and then we'll talk about the water neck that we're gonna put on here and how we're gonna set it up. All right, water neck is off and uh, this is what we're gonna be replacing it with. So this is like a $50, $60 part on Amazon. It's a knockoff track tough uh, billet water neck. Um, it basically goes in the place of the old water neck and what it does is allow the turbo to sit closer to the head because if you look at this one uh, hella chunky and the turbo normally hits like right here where the egr would go and the water pipe is anyway also so we're gonna go ahead and replace that and um they said it with teflon tape these six uh, millimeter allen nuts uh you want to put teflon on the back side of this this well actually no this is o-ring sealed that's o-ring sealed you want to put teflon here if you're not going well i'm going to be reusing the little uh throttle body heater johnny so i'm going to put a piece of uh a pipe here to reconnect that hose so you want to put teflon tape on this part and on the hose that connects to it and you want to screw this first and then connect this hose to it. Oh, you wanna screw this first, screw this in first, and uh, then connect this to it because you're gonna connect this to it after you bolted this together because this is gonna basically face at a downward angle towards this bolt and it'll cover it up. So bolt this, bolt the plate to the head, uh, screw this on and tighten it up, get as tight as you possibly can to where it'll face downward towards this bolt and then you, put this on just make sure you put the teflon tape on it because it will leak um and it also comes like pre-slotted for on the back for these o-rings that go in here <clears throat> and you basically just squeeze the o-rings in it you put it around a little uh, seal and, and uh throw it on there sometimes i put some uh Hanuman on there just to seal it up really good but I'm not gonna do it on this one because it probably won't need it. These all rings are pretty thick on this one. All right, all right, all right. So, water neck is installed. Uh, I cleaned up some of this wire right here and just taped it up some. I am going to uh, heat wrap it with that uh, reflective silver tape or gold tape. Uh, you don't really have to do anything with the heater core lines because the downpipe pretty much clears all of that and it does not get hot. I also rerouted the uh ecu wires um underneath the shift cables and those will also get uh heat wrapped too just to you know keep heat out of the the wires and whatnot and um also i forgot to mention you are going to have to change this upper water uh line you can either get one of those bendy hoses from advance or you can get a uh um one of those K tune lines or the knockoff K tune lines for the swap cars that goes down and under and then comes in. Uh, those will work. And um, this is pretty much how it would be set up, like I said it would be before, where uh, this line comes straight down and then it's not kinked or anything like that and it goes straight to the heater core. Yeah. So <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to talk about is what you will do with um, the brake booster hose. So if you have like a local junkyard or something like that, or um, you could just order a, uh, a check valve, not order a check valve, but you can go there, pull a check valve off of a, a EG or a 
EKs don't have these, I don't believe. I can't remember if EKs. EGs and Integras, they have these. So you can pull this off here, or you can order one of those uh, check valves off of um, like eBay or Amazon or Google where you can get one from. Some company makes a aftermarket one that's like a, I don't know if it's billet or silver or whatever. It's a aftermarket one, similar to this. And obviously, you know, if you don't know, the E right here, let me focus. The E right here will go to the engine. And this one will go to the brake booster. And what I do is I either use um, I use regular vacuum hose, something similar to this that will come off the factory car. or And most of the time I would use um, just like whatever spare 6 a.m. line that I will have laying around. And I'll just put it on there, put the check valve in between it, and then run it to the nipple on the uh, intake manifold. And as far as the fuel line... Like I said, you can get the uh, fittings that go from um, from this, which is, I, I, can't, I think it's 5 sixteenths to 3 a.m. And that's also 5 sixteenths, or it might be 3 eighths to 3 a.m. It's 3 eighths to 3 a.m. because this is a 3 eighths line. So it's 3 eighths three, to 3 a.m. And then you can make a line that'll like come down, go around, and it'll be tucked out of the way, out of like all the heat and away from the manifold and the downpipe and whatnot. And you can do it today. I'm just gonna put the stock one back on there for now because I need this car to run. And um, the next video I'll probably make, this video I'll probably make will be about uh, the installing the like intercooler pipe in the downpipe, and um, I'll make a video after that about uh, doing the fuel system. And I'll probably start going into production about the well making the fuel system, or not making the fuel system, but I'll start producing a fuel system that'll be bolt-on and budget-friendly for these chassis. So I don't believe anybody, everything that you have to do with this stuff as far as fuel system is DIY. So if I figure if I can offer some sort of uh, like bolt-in kit, the only thing you have to do is modify the top hat on the fuel hanger, uh, fuel pump hanger, and obviously install your fuel pump. You want to run, uh, if you're not running anything bigger than a 320, well, any aftermarket pump you put on these cars, or any car you want to put a relay on it and um, I can do also a video on doing a relay on that and I can also offer a budget fuel system with a relay kit um, that way it's all plug and play and um, yeah I mean that would pretty much be it for this video uh, if you have any comments questions you can either comment down below or you can email me my email is in the description below in the video and as always, comment, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next upload.